Welcome back everybody and this is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail and I do have a British campaign I'm currently working on and we are going to get back to that but I've had a number of requests to take a look at the custom battles which is a fairly new feature in the game at least one that I haven't really explored yet so uh, there's not a lot here to choose from to start but uh, what you have are two land battles and three naval battles to choose from. You can choose which battle to fight, how much starting funds you have, and then a starting nation. Uh, that's really about it. Uh, but in these various starting nations, there are different battles. So let's take a look and see uh, who we want to take. I think I'm going to go as the Americans. Uh, we can actually fight the Battle of Bunker Hill. Uh, but we can do so with our own starting resources, which will make this rather interesting, I think. So we're going to max it out at forty or 400,000 funds and see what that allows us to purchase. Okay, so I thought I was the Americans in this case, but it looks like we might still have to actually choose ships uh, for this custom battle uh, to load up on our troops. So uh, we'll start with a few ships and then okay it looks like we can actually load up quite a bit on these so um let's go ahead and take a look we can go all the way up to a rear admiral interesting 100 max points on everything that's pretty cool um all right we'll start with that we've got to put a minimal crew on this thing but really this is about the troops that we put on it so i definitely want some artillery. This will double up our ammo, which is huge. Um, beyond that, I think accuracy is probably the way to go. Let's assign an officer to that. We can go all the way up to a colonel, but for the artillery, I don't think I will. We'll go with a second lieutenant. Can we get better guns than that? Though? Oh, 12 pounders? Big difference on the reload, though. I think I'll go with 8-pounders. How big can we... These are expensive units when you go like this, but, boy, think of the damage they'll be able to do. All right, so we'll do a few of those. Then beyond that, let's definitely stock up on some Fusiliers. And I want them to have bayonets if at all possible just because of the oh, i wonder if we can get some rifles holy cow we can kind of choose whatever weapons we want here huh they're going to get super expensive but man think about having a ferguson rifle and sword bayonet yes please my goodness that would be fantastic i could i could go with fewer men if i get them get them with rifles like this and then on top of that let's give them morale melee and stamina And I'll put 250 in each of these. All right, we definitely want to create at least one supply unit so that we can uh, resupply these well-equipped units when the time comes. I'm still at 198,000, so I've got a long way to go. I think we're definitely going to do a few more Fusiliers. And I might even choose some higher-ranking officers to support them. Uh, I love, though, these Ferguson Rifle and Sword Bayonet for my weapons. I've gone ahead and added guns to this as well and I intentionally uh, went with the nine pounders down below even though they're not the best in terms of damage because they've got incredible range and I'm thinking that they might be able to support my troops uh, by firing on the British once we get to that point. So uh, we're going to have to do the same for the other ships as well uh, since we haven't assigned officers and crew to them either. I think we'll go with the Commodore, uh, save us a little money that way. And we're going to probably have to go minimal crew, as we've done before. Uh, and we're not going to probably be able to get an extra unit on each of these. Well, certainly not on this one. We might be able to get another unit onto this one. And I think I'm going to go with some skirmishers. Because uh, I like the idea of having at least a few skirmishers out there to kind of harass the enemy. And let's give them some accuracy. 
And then in this case, because they're skirmishers, I'm not going to worry about melee, but I, I do at least want to have, again, the, uh, the Ferguson rifles. And we'll go as high as we can on the skirmisher unit. All right, we've got about 12,000 left, but not really anywhere that I can put anything additional. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go into the fight with this. I have no idea what I'm going to be up against. I might be facing overwhelming odds. He might have just bought a bunch of cheap troops. I don't know if he's bound by the same funds as I am. This is my very first time doing one of these custom battles, so I really have no idea what to expect. All right, so here we go, and we're going to be loading in our troops that we're going to be using to defend. Oh, don't tell me I have to put one as... Re nope, I didn't. Okay. So, interesting. Here's all of our troops up here. They are ready to go. I don't, don't know where my ships are. If they're a part of this or not. It appears they are not. So, spending the money on cannon for my ships apparently was irrelevant and unnecessary so that's something I'll remember for next time I just needed the ships to be able to transport my troops okay so it's Bunker Hill let's defend this is gonna be fun I haven't done Bunker Hill since they did the graphical updates so let's get our skirmishers down here. Forward! Along with at least one unit of... Oh, we've got some skirmishers down there already. Okay. I'm going to send at least one unit of uh, fusiliers, though. Why can't I get behind? Maybe skirmishers can't. I don't remember. Alright, I want to target his artillery and take it out quickly. come down and try to take all these guys out if I can. Not entirely sure why my skirmishers keep dropping back like that. Alright, we're already doing a number on his artillery, so that's good. Here we go. This is going to be our first combat. Oh, he's shelling me from the ships now. Alright, let's bring these some more skirmishers down. I want to wipe these guys out in a hurry. Skirmishers are doing what skirmishers do. Did we already shatter a field artillery piece? Or unit? We did. Alright, I want to start firing on his infantry now. With those eight pounders. If I can hit him from here. Alright, let's get up into range. Got a lot of red coats coming toward my skirmishers. Oh, he's firing with the artillery again. hit that artillery from here is the only problem. Lieutenant Colonel Simon Matthews killed. Ouch. 
That was in my skirmisher unit over there. All right, so not such a good start for the skirmishers. All right, let's take out these guns. British temporarily secured the fence. I'm not too worried about that yet. We shattered that artillery crew. Now let's bring our men over that way. I gotta keep one eye on what's going on over here. So, historically the battle was fought on Breed's Hill, not Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill is this one back here. Uh, that was originally the target of both armies, but uh, they ended up fighting on Breed's Hill. But it went down as the Battle of Bunker Hill in history. Of course, now you visit it today, and I did a video there um, that's over on my other channel, on my Vlogging Through History channel, and you can see that it's basically other than the very center where the tower and the monument and the little uh, kind of uh, historic park is, it's surrounded by homes. You really can't even see the hill anymore because uh, there's homes on it, and it's very narrow streets, very packed densely with people who live there doesn't look anything like it did historically it's not really all the troops he's gonna have is it if so that was way too easy of course having these Ferguson rifles I mean it makes it pretty simple when you're facing Red coats, especially if they have just brown besses or something. All right, here comes Isaacs up the hill. Let's get over there. Although I may just want to chill behind my artillery and let them do the job. Why are we firing into the hill, boys? Seems less than ideal. Let them get up the hill, I guess. I think we're solid there. Now, now we can fire on him, right? Hey, Isaacs, taste my eight pounders. I love the, the graphical upgrades they've made. It looks beautiful now. Oh, we just can't quite get the aim on him on this hill. Move the guns up a little bit, perhaps. See if Buchanan's able to hit him. Oh, ouch. Okay, he does have more coming. All right, let's take that back. And let's send these guys over the hill. Man, my guns just can't hit him. Charge, boys.
Nice. Forty-third foot surrendered. Fourth Grenadiers has shattered. Now, um, little historical tidbits about this battle historically. Um, of course, a lot of people remember that famously the uh, the most famous American to fall here was Dr. Joseph Warren, who had actually been appointed as a general, but was not acting in his capacity as a general at this battle. I don't believe he had actually received his command yet or his commission or something that was in the process. I don't remember all the details, but he basically was fighting here as a private soldier, uh, though he certainly remembered as a general. He was John Adams' physician as well as a physician to a number of other people. Um, if you've seen the dramatization uh, called Sons of Liberty, which is fantastic, by the way, and I highly recommend it. They've de definitely taken some liberties with what we know about history. I wouldn't say they've lied about anything, but they've certainly taken some things uh, in history that are speculative, but not necessarily things we can prove. Like, for example, the idea that uh, Dr. Joseph Warren was having an affair with General Gage's wife, uh, and that General Gage's wife was actually the source um, who provided Paul Revere and Dawes and others with the information that the British were going to be marching out uh, to Lexington and Concord to seize the munitions. Uh, she may well have been the source. There's a lot of speculation that uh, Mrs. Gage was the source. She was born and raised in America. Um, but we don't know that for sure. And I, I, we certainly don't know that she was having an affair with Dr. Warren, who, who was single. Um, looks like we're going to lose these guns. That's a problem. I probably should have just kept everybody up on the hill. But uh, you see his death, uh, Joseph Warren's death in Sons of Liberty. Uh, Joseph Warren was shot and then uh, his body was in fact mutilated. That's all true. Um, but also killed in the Battle of Bunker Hill, leading one of the assaults, was Major Pitcairn, who was the man in charge of the British troops that marched on um, on Lexington and Concord. And he's actually buried uh, in Boston uh, at uh, Old North Church. Uh, my gun crew tried to r retreat down there and they got nailed. Got to get back up here and get some supply. Now we've got two British units that have surrendered. I need to get them safely away so they can't be turned. Oh, it's my artillery crew here. No, Murray. No, 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 no. Let's let the artillery crew come back. Oh, they can't. They can't man those guns anymore. There's not enough men. He's gonna come up this way, so we'll have to be ready for that. get Spruill resupplied. How many supplies we got left here? Quite a bit. We had 5,000 to start. Looks like we still have about two-thirds of that.
I'll put a link in the description below uh, to my video for my visit to Bunker Hill. Uh, that was earlier this year. That was actually my last trip. Um, corona hit while I was on that trip to Boston. In fact, I was in Boston when uh, there was an outbreak of the coronavirus at a business convention there in Boston. And, um, I flew the air through the airport right about the time that the news broke about that. And I came home and was really sick for about a week. And it was right about the time that I came home, they started shutting everything down right at the end of February, beginning of March. I think it was the first week of March that I was there. It was a, it was a cold day, but it was sunny, so it wasn't too bad. Got to visit the USS Constitution while I was there as well. That's actually right at the bottom of the hill. Um, I think, if I'm looking at this right, Constitution is down here, uh, is where you can go visit that. Yeah, if the rest of the, yeah the rest of the city of Boston's over here. So yeah, that, I think that's right. I think we got this, unless he's got more troops coming. Alright, Sanborn, let's get your men firing on these guys. Oh, we got, oh we're getting flanked. I didn't even see those guys over there. Bring over the supplies. Charge down the hill into these guys. See if we can get them to surrender. Oh, Amos Spruill was wounded in the attack down the hill. Oh, we got some Brits over here. Hello. <laughs> Got the guns on those guys. And shattered him. Alright, we need ammo. Let's get up in range and supply these guys. Oh, friendly fire, where? Oh, we're getting hit by the guns, probably. That's a problem. All right, back the cannon up. All right, go ahead and pursue those guys. Got to get a little closer to start resupplying them. We've got 28 minutes left, so I think we've successfully held Breed's Hill. Trying to sneak up behind me again. Fifth foot has shattered. Ready. Fire. Fire. <laughs> 
Man, look at these guys. They just keep sneaking up in behind me. Sweeney surrendered. There we go. So we've got 19 minutes left. I think we got him. This would be fascinating and a lot of fun to play if there was a multiplayer mode where you could each have a budget. Kind of like you do in um, Total War. You can spend it how you see fit, maybe have an open battlefield somewhere. That would be that would be a lot of fun, I think. Imagine doing that on Ultimate General Civil War. That'd be even better. Alright, so I think this is all set. We'll go ahead and speed it up to the finish and see what our final report looks like. Alright, let's hit the finish, see what the numbers look like. So we can see here, I had 1,304 infantry. Um, no, that was the British. He had 1,304 infantry, and he lost 1,051 of them, almost all of them. Um, mine all show up as crew from ships, and I lost about a third. But uh, that's actually considered a draw because I didn't go back and take the fence, <laughs> of course. Well, that was fun. Um, if you want to see more of the historic uh, or the uh, custom battles, I'll probably do some more down the road. But we are going to get back to the British campaign that I've been playing through. So be watching for one of those videos in the coming days. Drop a like if you would. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.